The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and in his name, welcome to this service of worship with Olivet Presbyterian Church on what is a special day in the life of our church. Today, we celebrate 140 years of faithful ministry together as a community of faith. On September 25th, 1880, a group of Presbyterian families were granted a charter from the West Hanover Presbytery to begin a new congregation that they named Olivet. And here we stand today in gratitude for the last 140 years, in gratitude for all the saints that have called Olivet home throughout the generations. Today I am thankful for you and for the special contribution that you are making to the Olivet Community of Faith today as we not only give thanks for the past, but we look to the future and for the ways that we can continue to be a beacon of light in this world of darkness, that we can continue to be ambassadors and channels of God's love and grace to the world. One of the ways that we do that as we celebrate our 140 year anniversary is we're trying to collect 140 bags of food to provide to loaves and fishes as well as to support our diaper ministry families. This is a tradition uh, at Olivet where each year we try to collect a bag of food that corresponds to the number of years that we have been together in ministry. And so this year the goal is 140. We've been receiving a number of bags from you all. You are more than welcome to drop the bags off in the uh, porch outside of the fellowship hall. We've got about 10 bags left left that we need people to pick up. So please uh, come to the church and pick up a bag if you're able to help us reach our goal. Uh, you can also bring the bags next Sunday, October 4th, as we will be having another pickup event here at the church from 11 to 1. And you are more than welcome to bring your bag and drop it off at that time. And I do hope that you'll join us for this next pickup event. I'll also mention that next Sunday, October 4th, is World Communion Sunday, and we are so excited to have the Reverend Scott McKenna from the Church of Scotland joining us as a guest preacher next Sunday. Reverend McKenna was uh, my pastor when I studied in Scotland, uh, in Edinburgh for the year. He's a wonderful preacher, and I'm so thankful for his willingness to be with us on this special World Communion Sunday. If you would like to receive communion elements from the church, please contact the church office and sign up. As we prepare for worship on this anniversary Sunday, let us first join together in offering a word of prayer to God. Let us pray. We gather together in your presence, O God, with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Today we give thanks for your presence in this community for the past 140 years. We give you thanks for all the saints of the Olivet Congregation and all the ways that your grace and love have been shared through this family of faith. We pray you open our eyes and ears anew this day to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil, May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds as we continue to witness to you in this world. We pray this in the name of Christ Jesus, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Friends, together, let us worship God. Stone. 
Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church. This month, Olivet is celebrating 140 years of being a church. In 1880, several families gathered together and formed a congregation near where this present church building is now. Many people, families, and ministers have come and gone while Olivet has grown and prospered. Some of the people who worshiped here are buried in our cemetery. Others are buried elsewhere, and many are lost to history. But through the years, Olivet has been blessed with many saints, and some who are not quite so saintly, but the church has prospered and endured and been a blessing. I am reminded of the lovely hymn, For All the Saints Who From Their Labors Rest, and am so thankful for every person who contributed his or her unique talents and spirituality to make Olivet the wonderful church it is today. As the hymn so eloquently says, for all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia indeed. And thanks be to God for each and every one of them. We know that we have sinned and fallen short of what God hopes us to be. We remember now things we have said and done that we are ashamed of, where our words have hurt someone, when our thoughtlessness has left others to suffer and pick up the pieces, when our lack of self-control has given offense and unhappiness. Let us confess our sins to God, followed by a period of silent confession. God of mercy, Hear the prayers of your thirsting people. For every time we have attributed your miracles in our lives to our own hands alone, forgive us, we pray. For every time we promise to trust you but turn to our own way when your response did not come soon enough or in the way we expected, grant us mercy, O oh God. For the many opportunities to extend forgiveness that we have refused, Show us what it means to love again, dear Lord. For each way we put our own understandings above your wisdom, for each time we resist your command to be reconciled with those who believe differently from us, direct us in the way of peace, we pray. For our silent sins, our quiet acts of violence, our indifference to the suffering around us, forgive us, loving one, and quench our thirst with your grace Remake us into the vessels of tenderness and compassion. For Christ's sake we pray, amen. Let us now confess our failings in silence. God speaks again and again words of love and forgiveness. You are my beloved children. With you I am well pleased. Hear these words and be at peace. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Good morning, Olivet friends. I have a message for all of God's children, but want to invite our youngest children especially to come closer to your screen because this message is just for you. Are you ready to wander in the Word with me today? I wonder, how many of you love a good story? Thumbs up if you do. Now, I want you to think about a favorite storybook, or a favorite author, or a book that you're reading right now that you want to share with us. And on the count of three, I want you to say out loud that favorite story that you have, or the author, or the book that you love to read. All right, are you ready? Do you have it in your mind? One, two, three. Eric Carle, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I wish I could hear the stories and authors and books that you shouted out today. I know that we shared so many great stories that we love and I look forward the next time we see each other that you share with me stories that you love. Today's scripture reading comes to us from the book of Psalms, Psalm 78. I want you to listen now closely to God's word for us. It says, give ear O my people to my teaching, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we've heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell them to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. I wonder, do you know what word I'm wondering about today? It's another word for story. I'm wondering about the word parable. Have you heard this word in the Bible before? Thumbs up if you have. You probably have heard this word in the Bible store, but probably not in the Old Testament like the book of Psalms is in. We hear it a lot in the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the part of the New Testament that tells the stories of Jesus. Thumbs up if you have heard any of these stories before. The parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost sheep, the story of the Good Samaritan, the parable of the mustard seed. All of those words are parables. It's interesting to hear this word parable in the Old Testament because we think of it so often in the New Testament that Jesus tells parables. A parable is a story that is told that teaches us about God or how to be God's people in the world. But the story might not ever mention God's name or Jesus' name. It's a story that just tells us how to be God's people. Now I wonder, if you look on your own bookshelves, you might find some modern day parables right in front of your eyes. How many of you have read this one? This is a favorite of mine, The Runaway Bunny by Margaret Wise Brown. It might seem like a story about a little rabbit and his mother but it also tells us the story of God's love for us. The little rabbit in this story finds all the ways, uh, asks his mother a question. He says, there once was a little bunny who wanted to run away. And his mother said, if you run away, I will run after you for you're my bunny. And then the bunny kept asking questions like, if you run after me, I'll become a fish and I will swim away from you. And the mother says, if you become a fish, I will become a fisherman and fish for you. The story goes on and on. And then the bunny says, well, if you would run after me, I might as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. This is a story about how much God loves us, that no matter what we do, God will always run and choose us. In the psalm today, the Israelite people remembered all the ways that God had shown up in difficult times, and in good times, and in bad times, and they were reminding each other to never, ever forget how God shows up. And then they said, and here's the most important part, it's important to share this with everyone. So here's your Wonder in the Word challenge today. See if you can find a parable on your bookshelf. Or share together as a family a favorite parable that Jesus shared with us. 
So now it's our time to close together with a blessing. So stand up wherever you are and make a heart with your hands. Stretch your hands as close to the screen as you possibly can, remembering that we are connecting with one another, our hearts from screen to screen, remembering that we are God's children together. Ready? Dear children of God, may you know that God is with you. May you feel God's presence and listen for God's voice and experience God's love. May you have eyes to see God working all around you when things get hard. May you be strengthened by knowing that you belong to God. Dear children of God, go out today with confidence in the fact that you are a child of God and that you are created in God's wonderful image. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear Olivet friends, thank you for wondering in the word with me today. And as we get ready to listen to the scripture, uh, scripture read, be listening for words that you might wonder about together. Let's listen to God's word. Amen. This morning's reading is from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people, and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? In the mid-1870s, a group of Presbyterians, most of them Scots-Irish ancestry, were meeting in what was known as the Harmony Meeting House. This meeting house was located just a short distance from where Olivet stands today, going uh, west towards Whitehall. These families were beginning to think about, dream about, no doubt pray about, creating a distinctly Presbyterian congregation in this part of rural western Albemarle County. The Spirit was at work in their midst, and in 1880, they were officially granted a charter by the West Hanover Presbytery, and together they chose the name Olivet for their new church. 140 years later, we celebrate the vision of these founders, their openness to the work of the Spirit and God's abiding presence in their midst throughout the decades. The Spirit was indeed at work in rural Albemarle County during this time. And during this same time, the Spirit was at work in New York City in a woman known as America's Queen of Gospel Songs. As all of its founders were praying about starting a new church, Fanny Crosby was hard at work composing and creating hymns that would touch countless lives, people of faith across the generations. Crosby was one of the most prolific hymnists in history, writing more than 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. Crosby wrote beautifully and eloquently about faith, weaving in her own experiences of God and God's grace. Present in her writing was not only recognition of God's grace, but acknowledgement of the trials of this earthly sojourn. Fanny Crosby knew hardship before she was even able to crawl as she became blind after an infection at the age of six months. Her father then passed away when she was a small child, and she was raised by her mother and her grandmother. 
Fanny Crosby married in 1858, and in 1859, her and her husband gave birth to a daughter. Sadly, this child died as an infant. Fanny did not talk about this heartache, but she did write about it, penning the hymn, Safe in the Arms of Jesus. One of her most famous hymns incorporates imagery from our story that we read in Exodus. The hymn is titled, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. This hymn was written in 1875 as Presbyterians were meeting in the Harmony Meeting House, dreaming and praying about beginning a new church. Listen to these words from this beautiful hymn. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. This hymn was a personal testimony of God's guidance in Fanny's life. Though we may falter, though we may be parched with thirst all the way, we are being led by the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Exodus, we read of the Israelites' continued time in the wilderness, struggling with thirst, uncertain of the future, speculating if it would have been better just to stay in Egypt as slaves. In seven verses, we see no fewer than five questions that all crystallize into one principal question that drowns out the others. Is the Lord among us or not? This is a question that reverberates across the centuries with echoes throughout every age. Hardship is a part of life, and thus doubt, fear, anxiety, and worry are emotions that we all must encounter. The book of Exodus is a fast-moving narrative which makes it easy to be critical of the Israelites. They were rescued by brutal slavery, by miraculous and divine intervention. How could they possibly question whether God accompanies them or not? But while miracles happen on one page of the biblical narrative and doubt creeps in on the next, we would do well to remember that the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. When we read from the book of Exodus, we gain the most by placing ourselves in the story alongside the people. Wondering, afraid, anxious, fearful for what the future holds, exhausted, hungry, thirsty. You know, at least in Egypt, things were predictable. In the wilderness, uncertainty rules the day. In this unique and prolonged season that we find ourselves in, it is it's probably not too hard to imagine ourselves alongside the Israelites, wandering and afraid in the wilderness. So Moses turns to God, and, and God does not respond with anger or resentment, but responds by showing once again that God is present with the people. God calls on Moses to move ahead of the people with the community's elders. And the group comes to a rock, and using the same staff that helped deliver the people out of Egypt, Moses strikes the rock and life-giving water gushes out. In the presence of Israel's leaders, God once again shows that God is present with God's people. The symbols here are powerful and connect both to the past and point to the future. The staff is a clear symbol of the rescue from bondage in Egypt. And the location at Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, it points to the pending giving of the law and the future of the Israelite community. 
This passage invites us to look back, to be reminded of God's gracious intervention in our lives, and to also look forward with trust and hopeful expectation of God's continued presence in our midst. The past sustains us for the strenuous trials of this life and teaches us to trust in God's future. As we celebrate our 140 year anniversary, there is much to look back on that will encourage us as we look to the future. And in looking back, we will recognize not only God's abiding presence, but also the reality that the Olivet Congregation has navigated challenging times before. There were moments where I am sure that members of the community echoed the Israelites by simply and directly asking, is the Lord among us or not? Shortly after being granted the petition by the West Hanover Presbytery, the Harmony Meeting House burned to the ground. The excitement of the early founders turned to uncertainty about the future as the physical building that they held worship services in smoldered. There was surely a moment of questioning, is the Lord among us or not? But the people persevered and the Olivet Sanctuary was completed in 1889 and it is in that sanctuary that I stand in today. As church member Cindy Cass dug into our church history, she found copies of letters sent to members, previous members, and just people within the community pleading for funds to keep the church afloat during an especially difficult financial time. The church had taken on debt of close to $10,000 in 1920 and failed to pay it off even into the 1940s. The letters that still exist today seem rather pressing, even desperate at times. There were no doubt moments when the faithful at Olivet looked at one another and wondered, is the Lord among us or not? Moments when the community asked, are we being driven by the Spirit or our own personal desire to keep the church open? These questions are sure to have crept in during difficult times, and time and time again the answer was clear. The Spirit of God was at work. God had plans for the Olivet community. During World War II, Olivet dealt with a prolonged period of no pastor in the pulpit. As the country dealt with the challenges of war, the need for rationing, and the grief of seeing loved ones shipped overseas never to return, the Olivet community dug in and endured. There are recorded stories of some of Olivet's groups canceling their meetings due to the need to preserve gasoline supplies. They continued to worship, to encourage one another, and to pray for God's blessing. But I am sure in the darkest moments of the war, when it seemed that there would be no end, moments of doubt and uncertainty crept in. And the question was asked, is the Lord among us or not? I've heard church members tell stories about just a few short decades ago when Olivet was truly still just a small rural parish. I've heard these stories about the difficulties of envisioning a vibrant future. One church member even shared that he was embarrassed to invite anyone to the church because of the disrepair of the bathroom facilities. There were moments when those in the congregation questioned what the future held. What were God's plans for the Olivet congregation? Moments when the saints of Olivet asked, is the Lord among us or not? When the question was posed, is this God's will or is it our will? Moments of prayer and discernment and wondering. You know, there are different ways to interpret this text in Exodus in regards to the Israelites' disposition. One way is to read the text in a critical way, questioning the Israelites' faith and accusing them of putting God to the test. 
Biblical scholar Anathea Portier-Young has written about the Hebrew word translated as among us. The Hebrew word literally means in our inner organs. Portier Young says other ways to translate this text are in our parched throats, in our cramping muscles, in our racing minds. She writes, yes, they wish to know if God is present in their midst and if this presence is more than a notion or a metaphor. They seem also to ask, when we are suffering, does God know it? When we are faint and close to death, can God feel it the way we feel it? I do not interpret this passage critically. I interpret it pastorally. And I think it is clear in God's response that God does not interpret the Israelites' actions as faithless, but faithful. They cry out to God because they trust that God will hear their prayers. There is trust, even in the crying out. God is present in the suffering of God's people, and God extends grace, light, and life-giving water in these moments. However, it is up to us to receive these gifts. Throughout the centuries, God's grace has enabled Olivet to respond to times of difficulty with faith, perseverance, and trust. And this season that we find ourselves in as we celebrate Olivet's 140th anniversary, it's no different. Like the Israelites, we are called to look back, to be reminded of God's abiding presence, to give thanks for what has taken place in the past, to learn from our ancestors, the saints who have gone before, and to trust that God was not only present in the past, but it is God who holds the future. One of Fanny Crosby's most famous hymns is Blessed Assurance written in the year 1873. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. For 140 years, the Olivet family of faith has sung loudly, proclaiming God's love, witnessing to God's grace, being a beacon of light in a world of darkness. So today, we give thanks for the saints that have helped found this church, the saints that have filled these pews throughout the ages, and the saints that call Olivet home now. Like the Israelites at Mount Horeb, we look back and remember God's provision throughout the years and leaning on the sustaining power of the past. We look to the future with promise. There will be moments in this life where we ask, is the Lord among us or not? Do not be afraid to ask these questions, to cry out to God. But remember, the answer does not change. God is with us now and always. Thanks be to God for this good news and thanks be to God for God's grace and for this community of faith that we are all blessed to be a part of. Amen.
With what shall we come before the Lord? What do we have to give our Lord who emptied himself, humbled himself to the point of death on a cross for the sake of the world? While we can never repay God for all God has done for us, we are invited, privileged even, to offer in gratitude gifts that represent our joy, loyalty, and love. Let us worship as we give. We invite you to give two ways. First, you may give your gift online at www.olivetpresbyterian.org and click on the Giving tab, or you may send your check to Olivet, 2575 Garth Road, 22901. With joy, let us give to God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Our Savior lives and reigns and invites us to bring all the joys and cares of our lives to this time of prayer. And I invite you also to remember those persons and situations that are uh, listed in the Olivet Bulletin insert, our prayer concerns. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer, my friends. Loving God, though you ask us to live in harmony by showing love to one another, we are tempted to give in to quarreling with you, with one another, with leaders and friends, fellow believers and random strangers. Our world is awash in animosity and fear, anxiety and distrust. Even though we know we are to be in the world but not of it, we find it hard not to mirror the discord and anger all around us. And so we humbly come before you this Lord's Day and ask you to intervene, to work within us so that we have the ability to turn away from those actions and attitudes that prevent us from fulfilling your purpose through us and turn toward the one who shapes us for your service. As the world reels with upheaval, use us to bear witness to your peace. As the headlines reverberate with bad news, use us to proclaim the good news of your love. As our communities wrestle with problems, use us to exercise holy imagination that helps the new thing you are doing emerge. As so many grow weary and worried, use us to bring relief and hope. Merciful God, our prayer lists are long. We cannot possibly name all the people, places, and circumstances in need of your compassion and transformation. We trust that you know our hearts and hear our pleas even when they are left unspoken. Pour out your care on those who are sick or injured, recovering or dying. Pour out your care on those devastated by fires and floods. Wrap in love your children who cry to you and lament those who mourn. Grant your unwavering strength to your prophets, speaking the truth in love to many as yet unable to hear, hear it. Give your peace that passes understanding to those overwhelmed with anxiety and afraid of what tomorrow might bring. Confident that you know the needs and are already present and at work in every corner of creation, we humbly turn over to you those things we can no longer carry. Astonished that you enlist us to do your will on earth, we ask you to show us what we ought to take on in order to be faithful to your call. We make our prayer in gratitude for your grace and in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All the way my Savior leads me, what am I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I As you enter into the week ahead, may you be reminded of God's abiding presence in our midst. May you look to the past with gratitude, gratitude that allows you to look to the future with hope. And together, may we give thanks for the gift of this church, for the blessing of 140 years of ministry, and for the future that we know God holds the future that is so incredibly bright for this community of faith. Now as you enter into the week ahead, may joy and nothing less find you on the way. May you be blessed and may you be a blessing and may light, love's own crucified, risen, incarnate light guide you, me, and countless others out of every darkness all the way home. As we join now in sharing together pictures of our passing of the peace, I hope you'll also enjoy pictures of family celebrating all of its 140th anniversary and pictures of the church throughout the years.